There's always one person here, which I don't know who is that. <laughs> like every time. Hello, YouTube. I was just trying to set up um, our first. <laughs> Life also can go. Uh, create filter one of it. Life also got filter one. No, yeah. Oh, then you can see the leg like. Then you can see the leg like me. Wow, Maybe for uh, higher front of the yeah. Yeah, I think this is good. Yeah, I think this is good. Maybe the one, the the one, the aircon. Aircon, no. Lower than here, maybe. Oh, okay. Let's put it on. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, just look at you. So you can see. Yeah, let's go live. <coughs> Anybody watch it? I think. I just try to arrange them uh, towards the middle so more people can see. Yes. Anyone on Facebook? The few. Hello, hi everyone. I too hot. You can adjust it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Hello, thanks for tuning in on a Saturday morning. Yeah, I look forward to today. Uh, just like any one of you, actually, I look forward to uh, the weekends. Although some days I might have to come back to the office uh, to work, like what I'm doing right now, you know, setting up the office, you know, setting up the studio, you know, uh, doing uh, some live sessions and all that. But actually, I, I enjoy it thoroughly because uh, I am not the only one who is working today. Um, um, my other teammates are... Are working as well. So for those of you who don't know, uh, we actually operate from Mondays to Sundays. Okay, we operate every day except for public holidays. Yeah. So so that you know you can get your gifting needs uh, on demand, right? So yeah, we are one of a very few uh, florists who actually operate uh, seven days in a week, lah. Okay, but uh, today I am not going to talk about uh, flowers, uh, but we are going to talk about plants, okay? Yes, I'm talking about real living plants here, okay? Real plants, live plants. These are not fox plants or whatever. These are real plants, okay? So, yeah, so we're going to wait for a couple more minutes. Not minutes now. Okay, maybe wait for uh, one more minute. All right. So for uh, everyone to join in uh, before I start uh, the session officially. Yeah. So a little bit of the backstory on how we ended up to become a plant parent. Okay. So, so I, so I, I just want to share a journey on you know how we ended up. You know, being a plant parent and you know have all these plants in, uh, in, in our platform. So it started um, uh, back in 2019. 
So as you know, in overseas countries, right, they have like four seasons, uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Uh, but for our country, we also have a very constant season, okay, a, a constant recurring season, which is the haze season. So I remember being, feeling so sick, you know, uh, when the haze season was around, uh, because I, I, I basically felt quite, I mean, now thinking about it, I actually feel quite gloomy, yeah, and also um, have some difficulty in breathing. And, and actually, I'm very worried about everyone's health, especially um, the health of my little one. I have it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be helpful to anybody else, and especially not the children. So, but instead of thinking or sulking over the things that I cannot control, yeah, I, I feel actually I feel helpless because. I cannot control the fire. I am unable to talk to the policymakers to make the changes that is um, that is causing this uh, whole haze situation, right? So I, I turn into thinking that you know what are the things that I can do that is within my own means and that's within my control to help me to have a healthier life or better life at home, yeah, a, 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 a better air, um, air quality at home. So I started up cleaning all my air purifiers okay and not just that i actually bought another two more air purifiers one to be put in the living hall and another one to be put uh in my baby's room the original air purifier that i had uh, is actually in, in my room so i think you know at least you know with all this kind of uh, effort you know it can help me to have uh, a cleaner air uh, at home so my mom saw you know uh, me with all this air purifier craze and all that. So she actually suggested that, hey, hey why not, you know, you, you try to put some plants, air purifying plants uh, at your home so that, you know, it can help to also clean the air and then you, you, you feel better, right, about, uh, about, about the air quality. So, um, as, you know, as, as usual, I'm actually quite skeptic, uh, skeptical about uh, what my mom says because it's like, hey, whether it, is it scientific, uh, is it science-based or is it you just uh, heard it or read it from Facebook, is it real and all that. So I, I didn't really uh, uh, put too much of uh, attention or give too much of attention to what she said. Yeah, so and and actually the, the one of the reasons that I, that I don't keep plants at home is because I have killed too many of them. Um, the amount of plants that I've killed, you know, I actually feel very sorry for them because they actually just died in my hand. Can you imagine the sturdiest plant, which is the snake plant, can die in my hand? So I was like quite reluctant to basically pick up the planting hobby uh, back then. Yeah. But then I do a little bit of research and then find out that, hey, there is some scientific truth to uh, uh, what is being claimed for all these air purifying plants. Yeah. So that's when I um, started um, more researching, uh, um, started to research more about plants, especially the air purifying ones. And then um, I think the more I research and then the more I actually um, start growing them and taking care of them, that's when I feel that, hey, um, it's actually very liberating and I feel a, a, a new level of satisfaction taking care of all these plant babies. So today I want to basically, uh, yeah, so that's the backstory on how I started my plant care journey because of the haze and uh, what my mom suggested. And then I went on to do some research and I find that hey, okay, there's some scientific truth to it. And when I finally uh, took the time to take care of these plants, I, that's where I find that, hey, there's a lot of actually uh, benefits in terms of having plants at your home. So from observ observing from my mom, right? So um, actually, my mom is not scientific at all. <laughs> yeah, she definitely is not a scientist. She's not a gardener. But she can plant the juiciest and the plumiest plant uh, that you have ever seen, that you can ever see. So she had a uh, butterfly pea at her home. Uh, she grew a roselle tree. You know, she had aloe veras and her aloe veras right, are the big giant type and the juicy type of aloe veras. So actually, um, from what I observed, uh, you don't really need to be too scientific, okay, uh, to have a scientific background or to have a scientific, um, 
a degree um, or even some green fingers to, uh, to get into gardening or planting. Uh, but all you need is actually a tender, loving and caring heart. Yeah. So during my plant journey, what I, what I discover is that um, why my plants die <laughs> is because firstly, maybe I lack of some basic knowledge in terms of uh, plant care. And secondly, because I didn't have the patient. Yeah. So, um, sorry, patience. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I was another living being. Yeah. But I think that um, throughout my plant journey so far, what I've learned is that, you know, um, I've learned is that, you know, um, patience, act, patience, love, tender, and care. Patience, act, patience, love, tender, and care actually helps uh, helps your plants in thriving and uh, growing healthily. So today I'm going to focus, there are a few plants around here as you can see, but today I'm going to focus on the plant that I killed back then, okay, which is the snake plant. So can you guess which, which, uh, uh, which is the snake plant over here? So there are quite a bit uh, of plants here. So. Um, for those of you who know or don't know, okay, uh, this is actually the snake plant. Yeah. So this is the snake plant and this is the snake plant over here. So snake plant is uh, the scientific name of a snake. So this is the snake plant and this is the snake plant over here. So snake plant is uh, the scientific name of a snake plant is called Sansevieria. So it, there are about like more than 70 different types of vera. So it there are about like more than 70 different types of sensuvera and the common one is a sensuvera uh, laurentae. So sensuvera are most commonly known as snake plant, um, uh, has, uh, has a more common name also, which is known as the mother-in-law's tongue. I have no idea why is it called mother-in-law's tongue, okay? Uh, yeah, probably it looks like a tongue and it looks very sharp, maybe most mother-in-laws are very sharp in their words. I don't know why is it called mother-in-law's tongue, yeah. But this is a very common plant at home um, that is uh, being planted by a, a lot of uh, uh, homeowners, I would say, yeah. So, um, so this plant, Sensiveria or snake plant, they are generally a low-light plant, okay. So when I say low-light, it doesn't mean no light, okay? So it's actually different. Low light and no light is actually different. So sensibiria are low light plants, but doesn't mean that they don't require any uh, sunlight at all. So they, they usually, they for, for convenience uh, purpose, right, you can actually put them in uh, under the indirect sunlight. Yeah. So um, generally, um, uh, this can be put even at a more darker um uh, darker shades of your uh, of your house, okay. If let's say it's in a bathroom or in a kitchen, right? So they are generally um, they can thrive. But if let's say you put them uh, or you expose them with more sunlight, they can actually grow healthier and also grow faster. So snake plant generally they have a lower or a slower growing rate, especially when they are placed in uh, under the shade. Yeah. But if let's say they are exposed to the sun, yeah, their growth rate can be uh, faster. Okay, so uh, they can also be healthier as well. So snake plant, they are actually sturdy plants. They are very tough. Okay, so you don't really, basically, you don't really have to worry about that. And usually, I would suggest uh, anyone who is new to plant parenting to start with snake plant because uh, it is very difficult to die. So if it dies, right, you were like me back then, like, you no, know, uh, my, uh, my snake plant actually died on me, yeah. So because uh, I didn't really have the patience uh, and, and the care for, for my plant at all, yeah. So I will be covering a few tips, okay, on how to make your plant, uh, uh, your snake plant grow healthy, okay. So the first one we cover uh, on, on the light requirement, okay. Remember, these are low light plants, but doesn't mean that they require no lights, okay? So the second one is that we're going to cover about uh, temperature, okay? So they can basically tolerate high or low temperature, but uh, 
But generally, I would suggest that you know, plants uh, they thrive better under a, a room temperature. Okay, uh, I mean house plants uh, and not constantly on the air conditioned environment. This is because you know uh, when we turn on the aircon, right, the air is usually drier and it will tend to basically um, make the plant uh, drier, make the soil drier. And if let's say you are constantly putting your plant in an air conditioned room, right, you may need to frequent uh, to water it more frequently uh, compared to if let's say you put it under your room temperature or at your balcony. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, these plants are basically very adaptable, lah, I would say. So you can put it under the air condition, it's fine. Uh, but you know, on and off, you can bring, let it uh, absorb some natural sunlight because plants actually they grow in nature. They don't grow like indoor, but we will put them in indoor. Some some plants they can try, for example, like like this the snake plant. Yeah. So that's the that's the second one on the temperature. Yeah. So just now I spoke about the air purifying properties, right? Yes, uh, snake plants. Uh, there, there is a scientific um, uh, research or study uh, saying that the snake plant can indeed you know purify the air and remove the toxins from the air. However, you cannot achieve it by just one single plant. You, know, you have to actually have more plants, okay? Have a few plants or have a few snake plants at your home in order to achieve that air purifying result. Yeah. So what my mom said is, uh, is partially right, okay? Uh, it's only partially right, okay? Uh, she didn't tell me that actually you need a few, okay? That's when I did some research and, and found out that actually you need to have a few of your snake plants in order to achieve the air purifying properties. So snake plants are very good to be kept in your bedroom or your study room because that's where you sleep and then it's where you spend most of your time. Um, you know, you spend seven to eight hours in, in your bedroom, right? So yeah, this is a good plant to be put in your bedroom. Yeah. So yeah. And then uh, why is it good in the bedroom uh, to put in the bedroom? Because they generally um, release um, oxygen uh, during the night time so that you can uh, sleep better. Maybe you can also run this experiment, put a few oh, Instagram posts due to the connection. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you can put a few uh, snake plants in your home, uh, in your uh, in your bedroom and see you know, if there's any changes in terms of your sinus condition or your uh, basically your uh, sleep, uh, sleep quality, right? So, yeah, so that's the second one we talk about uh, light requirement and temperature. So the third one I want to uh, share is in terms of the water requirement. Okay, so how much water does uh, Sansevieria uh, need? Okay, so basically, um, I I usually um, water them once a week. Okay, but there is actually no hard and fast rule to it because you really need to check. The condition uh, of the soil. Okay, so basically you need to test, use your finger and test, uh, press on the soil to test whether the soil is dry or it's moist. Okay, so there and test, uh, press on the soil to test whether the soil is dry or it's moist. Okay, so generally Sansevieria can uh, thrive in a very dry soil. Like this, this one is the soil is actually a little bit hard. So it, they can thrive in a very, uh, uh, what to say, a dry condition. Yeah. So you only need to water your snake plant once the soil is dry, right? If you overwater them, they can actually, um, it can cause a rot, like rotting in their root. So that would not be good for the overall uh, health of the plant. Okay. So yes, you need some tender loving care for your plant, but not over tender loving care that you go and water it every day because different plants they have different characteristics and they have different uh, requirements in terms of their water their sunlight and temperature and humidity right so for snake plant uh, that's the reason why i would really suggest uh, you to get a snake plant as your first plant because um uh, you won't die easily and you can basically build up your your um, confidence in plant care, yeah. Somebody called me in the phone. Can I? Yeah. Does it mean that people are not looking? Because, uh, because I don't know who is it. Yeah. 
No, I'm so sorry for the interruption. Someone actually called me on my phone, uh, which is an anonymous number. I don't know who is it. Yeah, so sorry about the interruption. Yeah, so so what kind of soil? Okay, so next, okay, we cover about water. So if you have any questions about watering, you can um, let me know. So I'll hmm? it attract ant bugs or anything you put in the house. I'll put in the what? You put in the house, will it oh. attract ants and bugs? Mm, no, they, basically it won't attract any ants and bugs. Uh, but because the plant itself won't attract ants and bugs, but you have the soil, right? So basically soil is, um, you know, there's a lot of like microorganisms inside. It's organic, right? So uh, it will, it may, you know, attract uh, some uh, bugs and all that. But from my experience in general, so um, I, I, don't, I don't observe that there's a lot of like, bugs or flies or mosquitoes, you know, um, uh, flying around when, when I have this plant. Yeah. So I don't think that one uh, is an issue. Yeah. So let's cover up in terms of the soil. Okay. So there isn't like the best soil. Uh, for snake plant, but generally, right, uh, for snake plant, you, uh, we usually use some small stones, okay, they are known as the pumice, pumice stone, basically to help the drainage uh, of the water in, uh, of the soil. So because we don't want the, the water to be kept uh, too, too long in the pot, because it will actually cause uh, rotting in terms of uh, for, for, the, uh, for the wood. So we actually use some pumice stone it's a white stone. I'll show you if I can. Uh, it's actually in the ZZ plant as well. Okay, I don't have any examples here to show you. Uh, yeah, because these are actually still uh, very small plants. Yeah. So the bigger ones, usually we will use some pumice stones to basically drain out uh, the water. But uh, you also have to be cautious uh, not to put too many of these pumice stones because uh, then it will totally cannot retain water at all. Then it will cause like uh, drying up of the root very, very easily. Right? So, and next, uh, let's uh, cover in terms of the um, conditions of the plants. Like when do you need pruning? So, if you can see this plant, okay. So, it's a little bit of like bruise. If you can see, they are like bruising over here. Right? So, uh, basically, all these bruises, they are a sign of like a bacterial infection, yeah, and and if let's say it happens uh, to the whole, whole leaf, I would say, so you will need to actually uh, cut it away and then uh, discard it. So when your plant turns to have like brown spot, there are a few possibilities. One is uh, it can be that it's starting to rot. Again, okay, second, it can be because of some bacterial infection, yeah, or some disease uh, that the plants uh, have, yeah. So you can actually trim them away and then uh, repropagate it. So that it brings me to my next topic on how to propagate a snake plant. So there are basically three main ways to propagate a snake plant. One, the first one is to propagate it. Uh, in the water. So I don't have any apparatus to show you, but how to propagate it is you, you can actually cut it. Okay, after you cut it, you can put it in in an opaque vase okay, with water. So why we choose to propagate snake plant in an opaque vase as opposed to a transparent vase, because an opaque vase right, will basically create a darker environment which actually simulates uh, under the ground. Yeah, so we basically like try to trick the plant and thinking that, hey, this is an opaque vase, it's darker in shape, you're actually in the ground, so let's start to grow some roots. Yeah, so that's the whole logic behind it. Yeah, but of course, you can still uh, propagate in a glass vase or plastic container or whatnot, that's, that's perfectly fine. But um, they just propagate faster or grow their roots uh, faster in an opaque vase because of the stimulated environment. So the second way uh, to basically uh, propagate is to basically take out roots, okay, part of the roots and plant it in the uh, plant it in another pot, right? And the third one is uh, you can actually cut uh, the, the snake plant into chunks and then, uh, put them in the soil and let them grow. But generally, they grow very slow, so you need to have really have 
a lot a lot of uh, patience to wait for it to grow. So if you want it to grow faster, just uh, uh, put it more under the sunlight. Yeah. And maybe also put in more fertilizer. Yeah. So the next topic is on fertilizer. Like how frequent or how often do you need to fertilize your snake plant? So because usually the plants that uh, you bought from the nursery, they, they, may, they may be lying on the, uh, in the nursery for quite some time already. And most of the time, we don't know uh, how long have they stayed in the, uh, at the nursery. So what we do is, uh, uh, this is just my personal, my personal rule that uh, we schedule to fertilize it once a month. So the fish food, mm. yeah, they look like fish food. So I will just put a few... Um, So there will hmm, no 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 the uh someone keep calling me. Yeah, I don't know who is it. So um I will usually put a few uh, pieces okay surrounding the pot. Not so many, just uh make depending on the size of the pot, lah, okay. So you really need to put it at a distance and all that and not cram all the fertilizer at one place because it has a uh, it may have it may be too acidic sometimes, you know, to the plant. Yeah. So you can uh, actually fertilize it uh, once a month. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So someone did ask about bug just now. I saw a small little bug, but I don't know it's caused by which plant. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a snake plant, right? So yeah, then um then how about this? Uh what else did I need to cover? Okay, in terms of the uh, uh, safetyness of this plant. So in terms of bugs and all that, I don't think they will attract bugs or any uh, insects, okay? But this uh, snake plant generally it is uh, not safe to be ingested. So if you have like small children or if you have like uh, any pets, cats, dogs at home, right? So place these plants away from them because it is not good for them if they ingest it. Yeah, they can touch it, you know, they can look at it. They are basically safe to be around all the cats and dogs and babies. But it is only not safe when the animals or the babies or the young children eat it. Okay, so it's actually, uh, you know, the liquid uh, is actually toxic. Okay, if there's liquid. But right now you can touch it, it's, it's fine. So these are very safe plants unless you go and eat it. So do not eat your plant. All right, uh, you can eat vegetables that you grow, but just do not eat your plant. They are not safe to be eaten, right? They are not meant to be eaten uh, because it's actually one of their self uh, defense mechanic, lah. Okay, so do not eat the plants, right? So, yeah. So in terms of much in terms of the general care of the plant, so please let me know um, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, regarding uh, snake plant or sensitivity while I take a short break <laughs> to drink water. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Oh, someone asked, is there different types of fertilizers? Anita asked, uh, yes, there are definitely different types of fertilizers. Yeah. So, there are some solid form and also there are some uh, liquid form. So for the liquid form, I usually will need to dilute uh, the uh, liquid fertilizer with water, okay, with a certain ratio. But different brands come with a different uh, requirement, so I won't be able to tell you exactly uh, how the dilution will, work, uh, will look like. Maybe I can share in the next session in terms of dilution of fertilizer and also usage of this uh, solid fertilizer. So I usually use the solid one because I find, I basically find the, the whole dilution process a little bit a little bit messy because it didn't mix with water and whatnot. So I usually just use the solid one, yeah? Though, uh, then I'll uh, place it, uh, it, it actually looks like fish food, like those uh, small, small BG one. Uh, then you can place it around uh, the swirl, yeah? And, uh, and press it in a little. Put inside the house, Katie. Yes, uh, snake plant definitely is uh, is good if you put it inside the house because it can uh, basically uh, help to purify the air at your home. 
and also it can uh, release uh, oxygen during the night time and it can also remove the toxins. Yeah. Have you heard about Sunderland fertilizer? Have you heard about Sunderland fertilizer? No, I have not heard about uh, heard about the Sunder. Uh, is it good for this snake plant? I have not heard about the Sunderland fertilizer, but I can actually check it out for you and answer you later <laughs> that you should worry about. Yeah, because the other two components are actually more crucial. First one is watering and second one is the light requirement. So generally, a uh, snake plant can actually thrive and grow with uh, much of the fertilizer. Yeah, and in fact, if you don't want to use like uh, two chemical heavy fertilizer, you can actually opt for an organic fertilizer. So one of a very good uh, organic fert organic fertilizer that I discovered is actually uh, coffee pots. Use coffee pots. It just so happened that I have them here. Yeah. So I started to collect uh, all these uh, used coffee pots, right? So, and then I will basically take out the coffee uh, this once a week. But you really, really need to check in terms of the condition of your soil. You need to use your finger. You can uh, 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 touch the soil. You can feel it, see whether it is dry or is it uh, wet, right? So uh, it is a good time to, uh, to water your plants when your plant pot feels like really light, when it's like so light, that's when you know that, hey, it's time to water a plant. Otherwise, you know, the, the, plant, would, uh, the plant would be uh, crying and crying for water. Yeah. So the snake plant is a little bit pricey. Uh, generally, snake plants are on a more higher side compared to other uh, house plants. All right. So if... Um, you can look for, if you are interested in a snake plant and starting your plant care journey, okay, you should always start with this snake plant, all right? So it's about like 38 ringgit on our website, all right? So, um, so the difference between uh, getting the plant from our website versus uh, from the usual nursery is that uh, we actually took care of the plants ourselves. And uh, before uh, the plant is being delivered, we actually checked and, uh, and examine the condition of the plant at each and every one of the plant. So we will clean the pot. So if you if you go to the nursery, right, usually you'll find that the pots are usually uh, very dusty or very muddy. But before we give it to, before we send our plants out, we will usually clean the pot. And then we will also clean the leaves as well. So um, if you visited enough of the nursery, you can find that actually uh, most of the leaves are very dusty and there are a lot of our, uh, watering spot. But over here, we actually wipe the leaves one by one. Okay, we are crazy and obsessed like that. So we will just clean clean all the all parts of the leaves uh, one by one, and then we will clean the pot. And if the if repotting is required, then we will help you to actually plant it in a new pot. So um, the plants on our site actually comes in the original standard pot like this, or you can basically um, also select uh, uh, the pots that you like. Okay, there are a few selections. Uh, some are already out of stocks, but I think this design is still available. Okay, this design is called uh, Needed Grey. Okay, you can go on the website to take a look. Okay, and if you find that a stick plant is a little bit out of the budget to to start, okay, I have uh, a different plan to introduce to you, which is the Fetonia. Yeah, so this uh, Fetonia, uh, no desk, no anywhere of the house, it's, it's fine, yeah. So Fetonia, just a little bit back, anywhere uh, of the house, it's, it's fine, yeah. So Fetonia, just a little bit back, uh, back, story, back story about Fetonia, if you can take a closer look at them, okay. So closer look at them, okay? So, Fetonias are known as nerve plants, okay? Simply because of the, of the, of the patterns that, is, uh, that they have uh, on the leaves, right? So, they are best for beginners and um, uh, they are very easy to be taken care of, okay? If, let's say, you leave them uh, uh, outdoor, okay? So, you should water them uh, every day. If not, uh, every other, okay? So, you should water them uh, every day if not uh, every other day. Uh, if you put them in the air-conditioned uh, room, uh, then again, you need to do the checking, right? 
you need to uh, use your finger to touch and see whether the soil is wet or not. So do not overwater the Fetonia as well because overwatering usually will cause rotting in, in your root and and once the root rot, uh, basically it cannot be saved anymore because the the the, uh, the root is is what grows the plant, right? So if the root is spoiled, then basically you you don't have the opportunity to let the plant grow again. Yeah. Or then basically you you don't have the opportunity to let the plant grow again. Yeah. So these are how much is this? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So this small little pot, this is a very, very cute plant, okay? Yeah. So these plants, they were 15. 15, yeah. So these are only 15. So uh, a very budget, um, uh, a very budgeted way uh, to basically begin your plant journey. You can start with Fetonia. Um, yeah. So Fetonias, right? So what you can expect of Fetonia, so they will grow taller. If let's say they are under, uh, under the shade constantly, Okay, they will grow taller or they will grow uh, sideways, okay? Like, um, like what do you call, like, flowing? <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> like, they will grow sideways, uh, I think sideways, right? Follows the sun. Yeah, follows the sun sideways, yeah. okay? If, let's say, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you put it, um, you expose it to the sun. So, super easy to take care, like, super easy. And this, we have plenty of stocks at this moment, yeah. Because these cute little things are just very adorable. I have like three of them at home. Each color that uh, that this leaf has, yeah. So there are two types. So yeah, since I'm here, I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more about other plants that's available here, right? So this cute little thing here, okay, is known as a sclerophylla. So sclerophylla is also very, very good for beginners. They are super easy to be taken care of. Okay, you can water it uh, um, once every three days or when the soil is dry, okay? And yeah, this cute thing here is known as maiden hair. Yeah. So they are very fluffy, they are very flowy, and they, are, they look really cute, okay? So maiden hair is, uh, is very popular. Maiden hair is actually a type of fern, yeah. It's a type of fern. Yeah. So ferns, again, there are like so many different types of ferns, okay? You can go crazy looking at, at the plant dictionary. I can cover that up. I'll, I'll, I'll cover that next time. And this is the rosemary. Okay. So this rosemary, I gave it to my friend once and I told her that because she actually likes to cook a lot. So I said, hey, you can use the rosemary to you know, cook beef stew. Yeah. So... Yeah, and they smell really good. These are super good, but this is a little bit tricky. Uh, although they are termed as like a friendly house plant, but they're a little bit tricky in terms of like, you know, they dry up like very easily. So you may need to water them very frequently every day, if not like twice a day, depending on where you store the rosemary. So if it's at the kitchen, it's somewhere that is like hotter, right? You need to put in more uh, water. And this is the uh, Japanese bamboo. Okay. Yeah, so Japanese, how much is this Japanese bamboo? They are very strong as well, very tough, very strong. Yeah, I think this one is, is it cheaper than um, snake plant? I think snake plant is the most expensive. 26. Oh, this is 26, yeah. So it's very good uh, uh, for you to experiment. Uh, taking care of plants, okay. And we have this uh, big guy here. This is known as a ZZ plant. So ZZ plants are also very sturdy. Um, the characteristic is almost like the snake plant where you don't really have to take care of it, you can just chuck it aside. Um, you don't need to have so much love to these guys, but they will thrive anyway, yeah. So snake plant is also a little bit uh, more pricey on the higher side. Snake plant, sorry, snake plant and ZZ plants, they are more on the uh, higher side. But the rest are generally they are, you know, their price point is like super friendly, very very friendly. So you can, you know, basically experiment it if you, you know, uh, if you decided to come on uh, to become a plant parent and uh, embark in this uh, plant parenting journey. Yeah, bottom left. What plant is that from left? 
My left is here. Bottom left. Is this the one, Jasper? Is this the one? This is known as a scleflera. Yeah, this is scleflera. We can send him a link. Scleflera. Oh, I see. Okay, this is scleflera. You can uh, go on to our uh, website, our plant website to check out the plants. We don't have too many varieties, but all the varieties that we put it there are very friendly for beginners. Yeah, so you can pick any of the plants over that's available and um, you, you can be quite safe. Yeah. Hey, Azari, Azari Lato. Hi. So how much is the rosemary? Anita asked, uh, is it Anita or Anika? Ask how much is the rosemary? Well, Arika is mm. 24. Yeah, rosemary is 24 ringgit. Yeah. So you've got taste, Arika. So rosemary is 24 ringgit by selling on the website. So all our rosemaries are healthy rosemary, healthy um, plum. So without the basket, the basket is uh, charged uh, separately. And how to take care of rosemary? Okay, so rosemary generally, you need to water them every day. They are more of like a water sucker, I would say. So you need to water them uh, every day, if not uh, twice a day, depending on where you put the rosemary. And if it's at, under a very um, dry um, area, then you might need to check the soil. Yeah. And, and a good way to gauge is that, you know, you hold your pot and if it is very light, most probably it's time to... Yeah. How to buy uh, COD or COD or post? Okay, so uh, as you have to, you can buy on our website. Is it okay to put the link on our website? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, you can buy on our website, uh, bloomdisc.co. Yeah, or you can go on to uh, check out our Instagram feed, right? Instagram feed uh, after this live show, and you can uh, you can find it. Yeah. So we currently we don't have any uh, COD services, uh, so you have to uh, buy online. Mm. What? What was the hay plant called? Oh, okay. Okay. So this hair plant is known as a maiden hair. Yeah. That's so cute. I really love that. Isn't it? That's so cute. Really cute. Yeah, these are called maiden hair. You can also find this uh, on our website. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, so uh, that's all uh, my sharing today. Okay, uh, focusing on snake plant. So if you want to know more about plants, uh, um, drop us a line. Okay, drop us a message and tell us what would you like to find out more. Well, whether it's plant care. Or, um, or specific um, plant knowledge, you know, do let us know, right? And Jasper asks, what plant is the toughest survivor in front of you? I'm oh. a noob garden. Oh, okay, <laughs> Jasper, snake plant, you need to get a snake plant, it's super tough. Plant. So snake plant and ZZ plant, these two are super tough, a super, super tough guy. So you can just leave them and then they will, they will just, they can survive by themselves generally, yeah. Facebook, which plant suits place in the bathroom? Oh, okay. Which one suit place in the bathroom? Okay, we actually have more plants than what we display over okay. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so Popos actually is super good yes. for bathroom. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, so Popos. Uh, which commonly known as the money plant, okay, it is uh, super great because this uh, photos they can actually uh, grow in water as well. So it's definitely suitable to be placed in the bathroom. Yeah, photos is at what price? Uh, to like what price? Photos <laughs> for ninety nine. Yeah, fourteen. So these are like super affordable as well, and yeah, generally they won't die. Also, they are like. Super, super tahan lasa. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is a photo step. Super good. Mm. Yeah. 
May they it survive with me. <laughs> <laughs> May the force be with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, so yeah, so I hope uh, you learn a thing or two from our sharing uh, this morning. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend ahead. So uh, if you're going out for shopping or hanging out, do stay safe, continue to wear your mask and wash your hands as the, the case is actually rising. So it's a little bit concerning. But uh, don't let that, uh, don't let that uh, crush your spirit, okay? Just continue to uh, be safe and stay well and uh, practice uh, some, uh, some yeah, social distancing and you know, practice your hygiene. Have, have a good uh, practice in your hygiene. All right. So yeah, we'll announce again for our uh, next session. So do let us know uh, what would you like us to share. Uh, what would you like to learn more about? Okay. So I uh, hope to hear from you guys again. Okay. See you and have a great weekend.